good Friday morning to you students. Um, I know you guys are excited to be in class today, uh, like you always are, and uh, welcome to Friday. It's uh, actually Junior Senior Banquet tonight, so how exciting for you guys, and I uh, hope you have a really good time, those who are going, and I hope all of you are going. A um, couple things, there will be a quiz next week, Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm not sure which day yet. I'm leaning toward Tuesday because Wednesday is already so difficult to get class in and homework. I can't get home, give homework that night, etc. So I think it's going to be Tuesday, but I'll let you know for sure on Tuesday. Just kidding. I will let you know for sure on Monday. You do owe me homework from last night. Please turn that in now at this time. Uh, make sure your name is on it. Make sure, um, well, I guess make sure your name's on it. Hopefully you did the whole assignment, so please pass those in now. Mr. Harmon is doing a very good job of communicating. This whole online class stuff is new to me, and so I've not done the best job of using him as a resource, but he let me know yesterday. He sends these emails, and I've got to start taking advantage of it. Tara and Ashley, uh, nothing's ever announced to embarrass. It's announced to help you. You guys did not turn your homework in, um, I believe, Thursday. Um, now, that could be, um, I didn't explain all this to Mr. Harmon, but it could be because you don't have to finish Wednesday's assignment, and I understand that. Um, but don't give yourself two bonus points in your account if you're not finishing your homework, okay? And from now on, I really want you to turn in what you did. I want to make sure you've done something. If nothing else, you have class time. Um, and then if you finish it, of course, whatever. But and I want to see what at least what you've done a little bit. So that was really good grammar. See what you've done a little bit. Anyways, um, so from now on, be sure and turn those in on Thursdays. You do owe me homework from last night, and I know Mr. Harmon will email me and tell me if you're not turning that in, so please do so. Um, let's get some bonus points going on to help you guys. I hope you guys would be women of integrity and not cheat on these bonus points. If you do, it's not. I mean, the only way you get bonus points in your test is to do the review sheet, and tests are such a high percentage of your of your. <coughs> Uh, final average anyways, but um, I'd like you to, on a scrap sheet of paper or in your notebook, whatever, you can use your notes, you can use your book, just don't use each other. I want you to solve for the letter D right here using Pythagorean's theorem. Notice we have a right triangle. Don't forget the right angle always points to the hypotenuse, so you're missing the hypotenuse here. Over here, I want you to solve for X using Pythagorean's theorem, and again, don't forget the right angle always points to the, to the pi hypotenuse. And so over here, we're missing a leg, okay? So I want you to solve these two. Oh, and one more thing. I'm going to have you pause the video in a second, but one more thing. I want you to solve, I want you to give me the answer to D in two different ways. I want a decimal or a whole number, whatever. I'm going to just, I'm going to erase that. I'm going to say I want a number answer and I want a radical answer. And same thing for over here. When you solve for X, I want you to give it to me in two different forms a number answer and a radical answer. I'm not being mean, but if you've been paying attention in class, you know exactly what that means, okay? We did that yesterday in class. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to pause the video. I'm going to keep talking, so you had better uh, go ahead and pause the video at this time. Work these out. Each one's worth half a bonus point. Go ahead and get started. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully uh, you guys have waited for each other um, to solve these problems. Uh, let me go ahead and erase these marks here, and let's quickly jump into the first one. You were missing a hypotenuse here, so you know the formula is L squared plus L squared equals H squared. And of course, one leg is 6, the other leg is 9, and the hypotenuse is D. So we end up with 36 plus 81. 6 times 6 is 36, 9 times 9 is 81. And then we add those together and we get 117 equals d squared. Now we're going to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of both sides, the square root of 117 is 117, and the square root of d squared is d. So there we go. Now, before you say, Mr. Gerard, is that your final? Just, just hold on, okay? I'm running out of room here. In fact, actually, I'm just going to go over here and finish it, and then I'll erase everything. So, so far, I have the square root of 117 for my answer. Now, I told you to write it in two forms, radical form and square root form, or excuse me, radical form and number form. Now, if you're a little confused as to what I mean by number form and radical form, listen, I'm not, I'm not being mean or anything, but um, I'd rather miss bonus point problems than miss problems on a test or a quiz. So instead of getting upset if you miss it, just learn from your mistake. Um, that's the main thing. So as I'm talking, I'm sitting here typing this into my calculator, 
and I keep hitting the wrong button. All right, square root of 117 is 10.8, 10.82. Now, you might have run into a different place. If you're close to that, that's fine. I'm not worried about it. So there's one answer. Now, here's the other answer. Hey, um, if you don't know this, I, man, I love you. I'm not being mean, but you're not paying attention. Okay, I've told you, you've got to simplify radicals. Think of your perfect squares. 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4. 5 times 5, 6 times 6, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all the way down through there. 9 goes into 117, and you just got to you just got to take these numbers and divide them in and see if they go in evenly, okay? 9 goes in evenly 13 times, okay? So you know the square root of 9, so you take the square root of 9, which is 3, and put a 3 on the outside, and you're left over 13 on the inside. That's the only answer I'll accept for radical form. I will not accept the square root of 117, okay? You've got to simplify. All right, moving on. I hope that's been somewhat of a help to you. Let's try the next problem. If I go too fast, just pause the video and back it up. That's one of the benefits of a taped class. All right, now over here we're missing a leg. X is a leg, so I know my formula is L squared plus L squared equals 8 squared. Now for one of my legs, I'm going to put the square root of 5, and of course I'm squaring that. And then for my other leg, I'll put x, and I'm squaring that. And then for my hypotenuse, I'm going to put square root of 30, and I'm going to square that. All right, now I did teach you yesterday a quick shortcut when you're squaring a square root. Now, if there's a number on the outside like 2 square root of 5, and you're squaring that whole thing, I wouldn't use any shortcuts for that. I would multiply it out and take your time. But if you just have a square root being squared, the square root of 5 squared is 5. And let's jump over here real quick. The square, the square root of 30 squared is just 30. Okay, and then bring down your x squared. Now, we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. So if we subtract 5 here, and we subtract 5 here, we're going to be left with x squared <coughs> equals 25. Now, let's take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is x. And you should know by now the square root of 25 is not the square root of 5. Some students do that. The square root of 25 is just simply 5. Just simply 5. So I'm going to go ahead and write a 5 right here. And x equals 5. Now, let's come over here and put x equals 5. Well, Mr. Hart, what do I put for number form and radical form? Well, let's, you know, I'll take a deep breath and breathe through our nostrils here. Let's take a look. x equals 5. Well, obviously, the numerical answer is just 5. And radical form would also be 5. Now, before you start throwing things at the screen, if you left it square root of 25 because that's a radical, okay, fine. But that's really not what we're looking for, okay? But either way, I'll accept. For, for the number answer, I told you I wanted you to write your answer as a number and as a radical. Well, 5 should be one of your answers, and the other answer can be 5 or a square root of 25. Okay? So there's your bonus points, and we are definitely moving on now um, for a nice, wonderful lecture on a special kind of right triangle. All right? So... Here we go. Would you copy that in your notes, please? We are looking today at 45, 45, 90 triangles. And I will explain in a second what that means. 45, 45, 90 triangles. The lesson is 10.2. And the date today is the 26th. And it's Friday. Graduation is getting closer and closer. So how exciting for you guys. Um, first of all, let me explain what a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle is. Would you please write this in your notes? That's not the best picture, but a 45-45-90 triangle just means this. Are you ready? Go ahead and put a 90-degree angle here, and go ahead and put 45 degrees here, and go ahead and put 45 degrees here. And now you see why we call this triangle a 45-45-90-degree triangle. Any triangle whose three angles are 45, 45, and 90 can be called a 45-45-90 triangle. Do you see that? So in your notes, I would draw some arrows so you see that you have an example of what a 45, 45, 90 triangle is. Now, I, I'm not being mean, but I can't make this any easier, students. If the three angles are 45, 45, and 90, then you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. If you have a triangle that's 44, 46, and 90, oh, it's almost, doesn't matter. It's not a 45, 45, 90 triangle, okay? So... Now that you know what, what I mean when I say a 45-45-90 triangle, now that you know what I mean, let me show you some more stuff that you need to take notes on. This is so cool. You're going to love this, so take some really good notes, okay? 
I want you to very quickly draw three, oh wow, that's a really bad example, three 45, 45, 9 degree triangles. I'm going to draw three of them. I want you to draw three. I want to give you three examples. <coughs> I don't know why my voice has been so raspy lately. I, wow, I am <laughs> really. Um, Mr. Harmon, you need to hire me to teach art there next year. Mr. Lemon's going to lose his job. All right, um, so here we go. Put some right angles in here. And then if you would, please, real quick, students, uh, students, just throw some 45s in here real quick, just for consistency's sake, so your notes, wow, so your notes are sharp. And I want to show you something that is just beyond cool, all right? First of all, I hope you remember this, students. Do you see this 45 degree angle and this 45 degree angle? They're the same, obviously. Well, that's, that's, that's deep, I know, but they're the same. Well, whenever two angles in a triangle are the same, you can draw arrows to their opposite sides like this, and those sides will be congruent. So whenever, and you don't need to write that down. You should have known that already from first semester. Um, algebra to, or geometry, but whenever two angles are congruent, you can draw lines across to their opposite sides, and those two sides are also congruent. So for example, if you knew this was a 5 right here for this leg, then you, know, you would know this leg is also a 5. Okay, So that's one of the special things about a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Their legs are always congruent, and we're going to talk about that later. Don't write that down. We'll get to that later. But anyways, here's what I want to show you. Go ahead and label this a 1. Well, if that leg's a 1, then you got to label this leg a 1. So guess what this um, hypotenuse is? It's square root of 2. Now, just leave that for a second. Would you trust me? Leave that and come over here. I want you to call this leg a 2. So we know this leg has to be a 2 also, right? Because in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, the legs are congruent. Well, guess what you would have here? 2 square root of 2. You're going to see a pattern. Just hold on. Because, by the way, even though there's no number in front of this radical over here, go ahead and put a 1 right here. You can put a 1. You see in the pattern, 1, 1, 1, square root of 2, 2, 2, 2, square root of 2. Let's call this leg a length of 6 and this leg a length of 6. So the hypotenuse then would be 6 square root of 2. Do you see the pattern? You should. If a leg of a 45, 45, 90 is 6 and 6, then the hypotenuse is 6 square root of 2. If the leg of a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle is a 2 and a 2, then the hypotenuse is 2 square root of 2. If the leg of a 45, 40, 45, 90 degree triangle is 1 and 1, if the legs are 1 and 1, then your hypotenuse is 1 square root of 2. In other words, the hypotenuse will always have a square root of 2 in it, always. And then whatever the leg is, in this case it's a 1, you put the 1 right in front of the radical. Here your leg is a 2, so you put a 2 in front of the radical. Here your leg is a 6, so you put a 6 in front of the radical. Now, Mr. Earhart, how would you know that? Well, you can use Pythagorean's theorem. For example, I have a 2 and a 2. If I use Pythagorean's theorem real quick, 2 squared plus 2 squared equals 8 squared. Don't write this down, just watch. I would get 4 plus 4 equals 8 squared. That would be 8 equals 8 squared. That would be square root of 8 equals h. And if I simplified that, I would have 4 times 2, two cross off a of 4, and put a 2 on the outside. 2 square root of 2 equals h. Booyah. There it is. So uh, you don't have to roll that down. I'm just saying to you, trust me, this is accurate. And so you might not have understood everything I just said. And maybe some of you are laughing and like, yeah, no kidding. But you, at least you can memorize. We can all memorize, OK? So you can memorize. I wanted to show you why we have three traits. But if you didn't get why, you can at least memorize this. So write this down. This is what you need to learn today, OK? And we covered this in bridge math last year. So I know Megan's had this. We did not cover it in Algebra 2 because this is a geometry concept. Characteristics of a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Characteristic number one, the hypotenuse always equals square root of 2 times the leg. So this is the hip, this is the hypotenuse, and this L stands for your leg. The leg, if I ask you to find the leg of a 45, 45, 90 triangle, the leg always equals, this is your leg, it always equals the hypotenuse divided by the square root of 2. That's how you will always find the leg, the hypotenuse divided by the square root of 2. And if I give you one of the legs, and I tell you to find the other leg, 
what did we just talk about, students? Did we not just talk about how the legs of a 45, 45, 90 triangle are always congruent? Sure we did. Now, these three characteristics are only true in a what type of triangle? Very good, exactly. 45, 45, 90 triangle. Now, don't write this down. Just listen. We're going to learn tomorrow, contain your excitement, characteristics of a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And that's a little tougher and a little, you know, not, not as easy. But nonetheless, you're going to have to remember to keep these two sets of characteristics separate. These three characteristics are good only for a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. And then tomorrow you're going to learn some characteristics for a 30, 60, 90 triangle. There'll be three of those also. Okay, so without any more hesitation, let's get into some problems to give you some closure. I'm going to do one, two, I think three, uh, six problems, but they're going to be very, very quick. Um, not long at all. Actually, I take that back. I'm doing four problems. No cheering, please. Four problems very quickly. So I need you to pay attention, take some really good notes, and you can hopefully get most of your homework done in class. I've only given you 49 problems for homework, so that's pretty reasonable. All right, let's take a look at the first problem in your notes. Would you copy this into your notes, please? <clears throat> Okay, go ahead and mark a right angle right here. And we are assuming, by the way, students, now you're going to hear a phone ring in the background. Just ignore that. I'm going to keep right on teaching. So. Okay, I'm back. I had to take that phone call. That was the boss, my wife. All right, 45. Now, okay, so we have a triangle here, a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. Label this a 3 and label this a 3 and label this a X. Now, oh, Mr. Earl, I know how to find that X. Pythagorean theorem. And yes, that would work. But come on now. Let's use what we just learned here, okay? We just learned three quick shortcuts that work for a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Let me ask you a question. This right angle is pointing over here to this side. So the side that I'm missing is your hypotenuse. Look at your three characteristics. Do you not see one of them says what the hypotenuse equals? Do you see it? It says square root of 2 times L. Do you not see that? So the leg is 3. So all you have to do is say that the hypotenuse is square root of 2 times 3. Do you see that? Look at your characteristics. I'm going to go back a page. There's three of them. One of them tells you what the leg equals. One of them tells you what the hypotenuse equals. Now, the other one just tells, tells you the legs are always congruent, and that's fine. But So I'm going to use a formula right here that gives me the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse equals what? Square root of 2 times L. So square root of 2 times 3. Now, the proper way to write that is to put the 3 first. So 3 square root of 2. There. That's so much easier than the Pythagorean theorem. Now, I guess to be honest with you, I probably should have wrote this formula back here, L square root of 2, but either way, I mean, that's really just kind of being nitpicky. It's not that big of a deal. Just remember when you write your answer, it would be very unorthodox to have your number back here. Put your number out front. So 3 square root of 2 is hypotenuse. That's it. Now, this trick only works with a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Pretty cool. All right, let's try let us try another one. If I can find one here. Here's one screaming out to me. Solve, solve. So I'm going to do that. And here's my right angle. These are 45, 45, 90 triangles. And my leg is called X. My other leg is called X. And my, wow, and my hypotenuse is called, if I can get this thing working here, 7 square root of 2. Yes, I know how to draw a 7. There we go. Now, I'm asking you to find x, solve for x. Well, say to yourself, self, am I missing a hypotenuse? Am I missing a leg? Well, the right angle points to the hypotenuse. So I know I'm not missing the hypotenuse. I'm missing a leg. We'll go back to your characteristics. Which one of these tells you how to find a leg? Well, yeah, this one tells you the legs are the same, and that's fine. That's all, you know, fine and dandy, but that doesn't tell you how to find the leg. This one here tells you how to find the leg. It says take the hypotenuse and divide it by square root of 2. That's how you find the leg, leg equals. So I'm going to go back to this page here. Did not mean to do that. 
Let me fix that real quick. All right. So um, I'm going to take my hypotenuse, 7 square root of 2, and I'm going to divide it by square root of 2. That's what the formula says. The formula says leg equals hypotenuse divided by square root of 2. That's what it says. Well, these cancel out, leaving you with just 7 over 1, which is 7. So x equals 7. So if one leg equals 7, then the other leg has to equal 7. There we go. That's a lot faster than Pythagorean's theorem, in my opinion. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try this one here. Um, all right, let's have two unknowns in this one, okay? So go ahead and put your right angle here. Here's your 45, 45, so we have 45, 45, 90. I always like to remind you guys that this is the hypotenuse over here. So there's my hypotenuse. And let's label um, some sides. We're going to call this x, we're going to call this y, and we're going to call this 4. Oh, we got some problems here. we got to find the leg and the hypotenuse. Now, can we not use common sense? I love the old saying, common sense, unfortunately, is not very common. Well, let's, let's not be that way. Let's use some common sense. I mean, let's go back to our characteristics here. Look, legs are congruent. If you know one leg, you know the other leg, boom, just like that, okay? Now, you don't have to say boom, but you get the idea. So I know that if one leg is 4, then y has to be 4. So let's write that down. We're good. y equals 4. Okay, that's a piece of cake. So all we have to do now is find x. Well, x is the hypotenuse. Yes, you could use Pythagorean's theorem, but it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Why do that? Here's the formula for the hypotenuse. It's right there in your notes. Hypotenuse, hypotenuse equals square root of 2 times the leg. Hypotenuse equals square root of 2 times the leg. Hypotenuse equals square root of 2 times the leg. So square root of 2 times how long is the leg? 4. Which leg, Mr. Hart? It doesn't matter. They're both 4. It doesn't matter. And then you always write this number out front. So the hypotenuse x equals 4 square root of 2. That is so cool. God created math, and there's so many neat things about it. I love it. I really mean that. It shows his decency. His, not decency. He's decent. His order. Things being done decently and in order. It shows his order and how things work together and make sense. Okay, we are going to look. If Mr. Harmon's listening, that was my biblical integration for the school year. All right, now let's go ahead and draw a right triangle here. And let's mark this as a right angle. And we're going to call this pi hot new 6 square root of 2. And we're going to call this uh, x and this a y. Okay, now here we go. Let's get after this. Oh, you know what we should do? we got to write 45, 45. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we know that here's the, here's the right angle. It's pointing to the hypotenuse. There's the hypotenuse. It's calling out to us. I can hear it. So, yes, my voice cracks. So there's the hypotenuse, 6 square root of 2. So we're trying to find the legs. Now go back to your characteristics. Yes, the legs are congruent. I know that. That's fine. But that's not going to help me find the leg, okay? This is the formula I want. In a 45, 45, 90 triangle, the leg always equals the hypotenuse divided by the square root of 2. There it is. So that's what I'm going to use. Leg equals hypotenuse divided by square root of 2. So leg equals, what is my hypotenuse? Well, my hypotenuse is 6 square root of 2 all over square root of 2. Well, these actually cancel out. Is this like the very first one I did? No, it's not. Okay. Um, and so leg equals 6. So that means one leg equals 6. Well, we know in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, the other leg equals 6. They're congruent. So x equals 6 and y equals 6. All right. Here's your homework. Let's get after it. You got it. 12 problems. That is so lame. That is not difficult at all compared to a lot of math classes. All right. So there's your 12 problems and they're pretty simple like these. There will be a help video um, downloaded for you if you need help. In fact, you might want to turn it on now if you want to. It's up to you if, if you want to. If there's enough class time, bag, Berean Academy Geometry, 10-2 homework. 
So if you want to watch that over the weekend, too, for your wonderful pleasure and enjoyment, if you miss me, I'm kidding, of course, but um, you can watch that over the weekend if you need to help with your homework. All right, have a great weekend. Have a great junior, senior, and we will talk to you guys on Monday, quiz next week, and a test not too far away.